So today, kiddies, we're going to be checking out one of the most expensive smartphones you could bag yourself in 2023, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. This oversized phone starts from 1,250 quids, rising to 1,600 quids if you want to cram in more storage. So it's certainly one of the most wallet draining blowers right now. And I've actually got this device on loan from Samsung, so I'm kind of terrified to even take it out of the box in case I drop the bugger and break it. I'd probably have to remortgage the house just to pay Samsung back. But you do get a fresh 200 megapixel camera, the latest most powerful Qualcomm chipset, and Sammy's S Pen stylus for poking, prodding, whatever your twisted little heart desires. But enough banging on, let's whip the Galaxy S23 Ultra out of the box, gonna spend a few days with it testing the game and the camera, all that good stuff. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now the actual unboxing bit of these Samsung videos is usually comedically short. What you have is one Galaxy S23 Ultra smartphone and a USB cable, and that's your lot. And if this was like a proper old fashioned back in the day unboxing video, then that's where this would end. Thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to subscribe and etc. So no plastic condom case, but other than there's certainly no power adapter, that's for sure. And there's two ways of thinking about this. One is it's more environmentally friendly, saving the planet, the dolphins, the birds, etc. And the other is, oh my God, I just dropped a grand and a half on a smartphone. I want a bloody adapter stuffed in there as well, please. Anywho, here we go. I have one of the most expensive smartphones right now clutched very tightly and securely in my hand. The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is another Godzilla-sized smartphone, 6.8 inches, same as last year's model. In fact, if you put them side by side, you'd be hard-pressed to tell which is which. One of the major giveaways is the fact that that screen doesn't curve around the edge of the phone quite as sharply as it used to. In fact, it's pretty hard to tell with this frankly terrible wallpaper. I don't know what Samsung was thinking having this as the default. Let me just sort that right on out. There you go, should be a bit more obvious now. So as you can see, it's a very gentle bit of slope in there. In fact, it barely curves around the edges at all now. And personally, I do see that as an upgrade, even though I didn't really get any palm intrusion on the S22 Ultra. It's just nice to have a flatter display. Find it better for watching movies, gaming, etc. And another upgrade is that the S23 Ultra now has Gorilla Glass Victus 2 protecting the front end and that back end. Got the usual aluminium frame separating those two plates of Victus 2 glass. And I've got to say, I really like this cream model of the S23 Ultra. We're over four days in as I shoot this video with no cases, covers, any kind of screen protectors or anything like that. And so far, not a blemish to be seen on the S23 Ultra. And that's despite the fact that I've just tossed this thing in a backpack loose with other tech. I've also stuffed it in a pocket with another smartphone side by side. And last night it even survived a serious fingering while I was munching on buffalo chicken wings. Just give it a quick polish down and it looks box fresh again. No stains from the sauce even on this lovely cream model. And certainly the matte finish does help to repel grime and grease. And if this cream model doesn't grab you in the biscuits, well, you can also pick up the S23 Ultra in phantom black, green, or lavender. And that green is rather bloody lush too. Still a reasonably chunky phone, although at least those camera lenses don't jut too far from the arse end. And yes, as expected, it is a heavy bugger again, and a proper hand filler too. Good luck reaching up to the top end of that bloody screen. Thankfully, for people with stubby wee fingers like myself, you do have a one-handed mode, which is quite easy to operate. And the Samsung S23 Ultra is IP68 water and dust resistant as usual, so it can get rather moist and still not suffer. So that's the rather enormous phone itself. What about the software running on this thing? Well, on board is Samsung's latest, freshest One UI version 5.1 built on Android 13. And Samsung has kindly chucked in four years of OS updates. So that's Android 14, 15, 16, and then 17 beyond that. And five years of security updates. So even though you've spunked out a hideous amount of cash on this thing, it should hopefully do you for a while. Now, as we already discovered, Samsung's default wallpapers definitely leave a lot to be desired. Frankly, they're more dull than attempting to read the whole of War and Peace in Russian. Thankfully, you do have some jazzier options or you can just slap your own on as usual. And now in One UI 5.1, you can actually have the wallpaper automatically change up depending on which mode you're in. So for instance, when you arrive home, you can have it set to a lovely picture of the family or just a disembodied mannequin head in my case. And that's not my actual address, by the way, so please don't try and burgle me. And then when you get to work, you can have it changed to something entirely more gratuitous. Got a bit of geeky animation shenanigans and whatnot. And while regular One UI 5 introduced stackable widgets, in One UI 5.1 you've now got a new battery widget. Just check out the remaining charge on the rest of your Samsung kit, presuming you're wealthy enough to spunk out loads of cash on a Galaxy Watch and Galaxy Buds and the like. 
And of course, as usual with the Samsung smartphone, you've got lots of Samsung's own apps chucked in there. Most of these are duplicates of what Google has already chucked onto Android. So, you know, some of them are pretty good, like SmartThings and Samsung Wallet. Some of them less good, like good old Bigsby. Samsung's improved a few of its own apps. So for instance, in the Gallery app, they've rearranged the information that's shown when you swipe up. And you can easily search now for someone in your photo collection using just their face. One of the best bits of Samsung smartphones is the excellent set of privacy and security tools, as well as those Knox tools, which include some pretty bloody good encryption. You also have an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor here on the S23 Ultra. And over the past couple of days, this has been working gangbusters. It's really, really fast to unlock. It seems to work even when my hands have just been freshly washed. They're still a bit like damp. And if for whatever reason you're struggling with that fingerprint sensor, well, the good news is the face unlock is just as reliable, if not quite as secure, but it seems to work really well, even in very dim light. As for the storage, well, Samsung clearly do not trust me with that 1,600 pound one terabyte model, because this is the base model, the 256 giga, which only costs 1,249 pound. A big old chunk of that used by the system files and also the apps, about probably 30 gigs worth of that is stuff that I've installed, like Genshin, Call of Duty, and good old Deezer with all the various downloads. But that still means you've got close to 50 gigs worth of space already used up before you even turn this bloody thing on. But is there any space for a micro SD memory card? Well, as usual, is there bollocks? There's space for two SIM cards, and that is it. Oh, there goes mine. And also, be really bloody careful when you're shoving a porky pin device into that SIM tray hole, because that orifice is right next door to a mic hole. I'm talking literally a millimeter or two apart, so just be careful you don't shove that SIM tool straight into the mic hole and potentially bugger it. Now, yes, as usual, Samsung has cunningly stuffed its S Pen stylus inside of a bottom hole here on the S23 Ultra. Just give it a wee prod and it springs right out in a highly satisfying manner. And when it does, you can have this menu automatically pop up on screen with all of the various S23 Ultra's S Pen ready apps. So as always, you can edit documents, you can have a bit of a sketch if you want. And the S Pen can be pretty bloody handy at times for just scribbling notes on a PDF or some other document before you share it with other people. Or just for making little notes to yourself, you can quickly and easily capture your screen and then doodle on that. You can even doodle on yourself if you want to. I'm not really sure what the point of this is, but there you go. Give yourself some lovely tiger skin hair. I do find it really handy for signing documents when I'm out and about just replying to people via email. It's definitely a nice to have. I wouldn't say it's an essential feature for me personally, but I can imagine that lots of people absolutely swear by it. Of course, you could simply get your ass down the shops and buy yourself a £5, £10 stylus for whatever smartphone and save yourself a bucket load of cash. But the convenience of having it in that little orifice is pretty bloody good. At least you haven't accidentally left it at home or in your jacket pocket when you need it the most. Now, if you're a media fan, you will get a serious kick out of Samsung's 6.8 inch AMOLED display slapped here on the S23 Ultra. It is super crisp, one of the most premium displays out there with its 3088 by 1440 Quad HD Plus resolution. However, bear in mind, if you actually want to take full advantage of that Quad HD Plus resolution to check out all the finer details in your photos, etc., you will actually have to activate it in the S23 Ultra's display settings. Contrast is absolutely stunning as always. You've got full support for HDR10 Plus content, although no Dolby Vision love as usual. Come on, Samsung, sort it out. The screen mode is set to vivid by default, so nice poppy, punchy, slap you right in the mug colours as always, which is great for animated fare and the like. Although, of course, if you want to be editing photos or something on the move on the S23 Ultra, you might want to change that to the natural mode instead. Viewing angles are as fantastic as ever, and if you boost that brightness to the maximum levels, it'll basically melt your retinas. And that's without even factoring in the extra brightness mode in those display settings. And that wee selfie cam orifice is pretty dinky, so it barely gets in the way when you go full screen watching a movie or if you're getting a bit of gaming on the go. And not exactly a shocker that the S23 Ultra's mighty display once again maxes out at 120Hz and it's set to adaptive by default, so it will scale up and down depending on what you're up to. And that AMOLED tech also means handily you have an always-on display. And of course, you've got yourself a stereo speaker output on the S23 Ultra as well. But is it any good? 
So here's a quick overview on what's new, what's the same, and early impressions on Samsung's latest pocket pleaser. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. And yeah, the stereo setup does have reasonable balance to it, though, as usual, that bottom speaker is pulling a bit more weight than that top earpiece speaker. But certainly when I max out the volume here on the S23 Ultra, I've had absolutely no issues hearing what's going on when I've been watching a bit of YouTube or listening to a podcast in a very noisy kitchen, pans banging, small children singing and smashing stuff. And the clarity, definitely respectable at that maxed out volume as well. And you've got those Dolby Atmos Smarts as well, which as you can see, set to auto mode by default. So the actual tuning will depend on what you're up to. And you've also got Dolby Atmos for gaming, otherwise you do have an equaliser built in there that you can piddle about with yourself. And of course you've got Bluetooth 5.3 for streaming your tunes to a speaker by headphones. No headphone jack on here, but thankfully that wireless streaming, no issues at all the first few days. So, so far, so very familiar, not exactly a huge number of upgrades at all compared with last year's S22 Ultra, but the biggest upgrade for me certainly is the fact that you've now got a Qualcomm chipset stuffed in this thing, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which us Brits did not get in last year's model, we got one of Samsung's own Exynos efforts. And I did actually attend the Snapdragon Summit for the massive global launch of the 8 Gen 2, so go check out the video I did from there for the full skinny on this clever wee chip. But if you can't be bothered to go check that out, well, in a nutshell, the 8 Gen 2 is an absolute beefcake. I've got 12 gigs of RAM packed inside of this review model. As you can see, very respectable scores from Geekbench. Not the absolute best results I've seen out of an 8 Gen 2 device, I've got to say, though. Sometimes that multi-core score does squeeze up above 5,000. But certainly the everyday running on the S23 Ultra has been silky smooth these past three or four days. And yes, just to thoroughly test out the S23 Ultra, I have done a good bit of Genshin Impact action as well. And the good news is that frame rate stays solidly at 60 FPS, only dipping ever so slightly, certainly not to the point where you can actually notice any juddering in the frame rate when you are playing. And that's with the graphics, of course, maxed out. And the good news is even if you're gaming for an hour, two hours, however long you want, the S23 Ultra doesn't heat up to a troublesome degree. I did notice some heat build up towards the very top end of the smartphone, got quite warm, but not to the point where my fingers were getting singed and certainly not to the point where the performance levels dropped. So if you're really into your mobile game and you want the best possible performance, then definitely the S23 Ultra is worth considering. That said, I did recently review the Red Magic 8 Pro, which also sports the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It's a dedicated gaming phone with proper gaming features, and it costs a lot less than this. Whereas here on the Samsung S23 Ultra, the gaming mode is pretty basic by comparison, although at least you can block notifications and the like. So that's a lovely little upgrade. When it comes to the battery tech, unfortunately, it is once again a 5,000 mAh capacity cell crammed inside of that gigantic chassis, same as last year's device. Let's say, unfortunately, the S22 Ultra never failed me when it came to the battery life. Now, seriously, it was like the offspring of the Duracell Bunny and David Attenborough. It would just never stop. The good news is the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is easily lasted even a heavy day with lots of camera play. For example, last night it was still on 25% after over 5 hours of screen on time, including half an hour of Skyping, loads of video recording, and I shot must have been about 120 photos. I won't absolutely swear by it just yet, not until I've been using the S23 Ultra as my full-time phone for at least a few more days, then it's settled into my daily resume, but certainly so far, it's looking like it's going to be just as hard to kill as Steven Seagal. And there's a reference that no one under the age of 35 will get. When it comes to charging back up though, the S23 Ultra ain't the nippiest around. You've got 45 watt wired charging support, otherwise you do at least have the wireless charging as well. Now besides the chipset, the other big hardware upgrade for the S23 Ultra is their camera tech. Samsung has slapped its all new 200 meg adaptive pixel camera sensor here on the Ultra, which you do not get on the regular S23 or the S23 Plus. Now this is actually Samsung's Isocell HP2 sensor, which is the same size as last year's 108 meg sensor found in the S22 Ultra, and not as big as sensors found in rivals like the Xiaomi 13 Pro or the Vivo X90 Pro. But of course image processing also plays a large part in photo and video quality, and that's one area that Samsung reckons it has improved for this generation. By default, the Ultra's 200 meg sensor uses 16 in 1 pixel binning versus 9 in 1 on the S22 Ultra, while also benefiting from Samsung's enhanced Super Quad Pixel autofocus, which uses the 200 meg sensor to accurately determine distances and keep your subject perfectly crisp. 
I didn't really notice much difference when it came to daylight shots on the S23 Ultra. You still get crisp, detail-packed pics with some lovely punchy colour reproduction as well. Night shots on the S23 Ultra can still look a little bit soft and you will certainly see some blur with moving subjects. And some rival smartphones like the Vivo X90 Pro with its massive one inch sensor do produce brighter results in general. But I think I actually prefer the more natural output that you get from the Samsung S23 Ultra with tones that are much closer to what you'll see with the naked eye. Strong contrast is usually handled well without much saturation in those brighter bits while pics are finely detailed as long as things don't get too dark. Now Samsung loves a bonus camera mode, you've got the usual fare on here including that dependable portrait mode. As usual this adds a lovely adjustable bokeh style background action to your snaps. As ever it is completely befuddled by wild hair but you can adjust the intensity of the bokeh effect in Samsung's gallery app and those night portraits do look rather ruddy lush. And then if we skip along into more you'll find lots more crams in here including the usual pro mode. This allows you to tinker with the various camera settings, get a very precise kind of output. And Samsung's Expert Raw app is back in action, easily accessible via that camera menu. And you've now got the option of jumping right up to 50 megapixels. You're not limited to just 12 megapixels as you were on last year's Ultra. And the S23 Ultra can automatically switch to the likes of night mode and food mode when it detects the conditions are a bit crap or you're trying to take a snap of a burger or whatever. Good old single take as well, one of my favourites. And then as well as the 200 meg main sensor here on the S23 Ultra, you also have three other lenses to choose from. These are decidedly less interesting however because they're the same lenses slapped on last year's S22 Ultra. So you've got a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter and then a pair of 10 megapixel telephoto snappers, 3 times zoom and 10 times zoom. Whoa, freaky. And as usual, those telephoto shooters are impressive stuff, allowing you to get closer to the action without intruding. And as usual, if you want to, you can pinch in all the way up to 100 times zoom, although things get a bit grainy and crappy above about the 20 times level. And if you want to shoot some video, well, you've got the usual 4K options at 30 or 60 frames per second. Otherwise, you can capture 8K resolution footage now at 30 frames per second rather than 24 FPS. Now video is absolutely a highlight here as usual with Samsung smartphones. Even at that 8K resolution the stabilisation is sublime. You can wander around while shooting and everything stays smooth. When things get dark the visuals do get a lot softer and that focus can struggle a bit so I'd say try not to shoot too much video in really low light environments that's definitely a bit of a letdown. And when you're shooting in a really noisy place the Galaxy S23 Ultra still does an impressive bang up job of picking up on everything that has been said in front and behind of the lenses. And speaking of lenses you can swap between all of them while shooting 4K resolution footage or lower with a pretty smooth transition overall. And then if we flip around to the front facing selfie cam you don't get a 40 megapixel selfie shooter on the S23 Ultra like you did with last year's S22 Ultra. Instead it's only a 12 meg effort now. And yeah, I'm not really a selfies guy because, well, look at me, but I found that the S23 Ultra did an okay job of capturing my haggard colourless complexion even at night. But good news for any vlogging fans because you can actually capture 4K resolution video using that front facing selfie cam at 30 or 60 frames per second which very few other smartphones allow you to do. And certainly for Skyping and zooming I come through loud and clear on the audio and don't look like a total bag of arse so that's always a bonus. And there you have it my lovelies, that in a delicious little nutshell is the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra after I've been using it as my full time smartphone for a few days. Now I will be spending longer with this almighty heifer just to see if it really is worth that <laughs> ridiculous amount of cash but in the meantime it would be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you!